Welcome. Today is the first episode of a series of building a game with Rust and Bevy. So Bevy is a cool data-driven game engine which follows the ECS development model, which is Entity Component System. So we're going to include Bevy, 0.5, and the run here for random numbers. We have our assets already here. We have our enemy, our explosions, our laser, and our player A here, which is going to be our little ferris. We have player B as well. Then we have our main here with our hello world. So far, so good. And on the right side here, we're going to put our terminal here, such as it doesn't take space on the bottom. And here, we're going to display the game here. Don't get excited. We have to cut it first. Okay, so let's cut now. So the first things we're going to do here is we're going to allow the unused for now. We will comment it out later. And then we're going to use the baby prelude. Then we're going to create our player sprite. So that would be the name of the asset image here. So that is going to be this one here, the player A. So we're going to say player A01.png. Now we can close this back here. So BV has four main constructs. There's the entity, the component, and the systems. And that is the ECS. And there's also another one, resources. And the way you link that together is with the builder pattern. So you do an app, build, and here we're going to insert our first resource, which is going to be the background. So clear color is just a struct, and that is just an enum here that we are putting, and then the baby engine knows what to do with those, and that will be our background. The next one here we're going to insert is the window descriptor. And that will be a struct. We'll have our title, Rust Invaders, and then our width. And that is going to be a weirdo number, but this is to make it fit here on the right side here, such as it's going to be nice and tight. And then we have the height. And then we have our default. There's other properties, we don't need to set them. And the last one here is we're going to add a plugins. So a plugins is actually kind of a sub builder that will build many of these things, resources, system, or whatever. So there is a plugin that is called default plugin, and you have to plug in it here, such as you have everything working. And the last one here is going to be a run. So we're going to run it like this. And if we press save, we should hopefully get our first screen here. So it's not placed here because somehow in the Windows descriptor, we cannot give the X, Y, but we're going to see later how we can place it exactly here. So it's going to be nice and tight and we're going to be able to have our cool game over there. So now let's add our first sprite here, our first square. So everything works in BV as a system. That is a way you add things into the stage. And the system is a simple function. Give it a name. And then as argument, you are defining what you need. And so the first thing that you always do in a system function is you have the comments. So that is a comments argument, and that will allow you to send comments to the Bevy engine. Then you are going to tell the Bevy engine what you need in this function. So here's what we need is materials, which is a resource, a mutable resource, and that will allow us to create color materials. And so that is a key thing. So every time you want to add something to the stage, you usually need to have that, and that allows you to give a material to your objects. Because we want to reposition the window, we're going to want to have the windows with mute, which is a resource mutable, windows. And here, the beauty of Bevy is that this list of arguments are actually dynamic. You tell Bevy what you need, and the way you register it is with an add, and this one would be a startup system. And then we give our method here setup, and that is the magic of Bevy system. That will take the function, we we'll look at the arguments, and we create a structure here, which will be a system descriptor that then BV can inspect and ingest what is needed. And startup system gets called once, and then we can also do a add underscore system, and normal systems get called on each event loop. So now in our setup here, what we are going to do is we are going to add a camera to the scene here, and the way you do that is always using comments and spawn. So you spawn new bundle into the scene. 
And so that is a way that you spawn the camera, enemies, players, lasers, everything is always with a spawn. And that will actually create an entity. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And now, in our specific example here, we want the windows to be on the top right. So now we're going to position window. And the way you do that is you have a mutable window. You get a primary window from the windows. And then you unwrap it. I don't really usually like to use unwrap, but in this case, we're going to use that. And then we do a window set position. And here you need to use i vect2, which is a vector of two items, x, y, integers. Here I have two screens, one on top and one at the bottom. So this is why I need to do this kind of thing. And now if I press save, then we have our Russ invader on the right. That's pretty good. Close it again, because otherwise our CPU is going to go crazy. OK, so now what we're going to do is add our first sprite to the screen. And for now, we're just going to do a square. So let's close the main function first. And then the way you spawn a sprite is with commands again, and then spawn bundle. And that will actually create the entity in a way. And now in the bundle here, we're going to use a sprite bundle structure. And then we set the material property. And we're using the materials resource here, the materials manager, to create a material which is just a color. And so here we set the color, which is going to be a reddish one. And then we have the sprite property, which will be a sprite structure. And we're going to give the size of the sprite here. So vec2 is going to be a floating vector. And so we have 200 and 100. And then we set the default here for all of the other properties. And then we press save. And now we have our big rectangle here. OK, so that is the simplest form here. So now, obviously, we want to display our sprite. And so what we need here is another resource, which will be called asset server. So asset server doesn't have to be mutable, and that will be an asset server. And so what that allows us to do now is when we create the materials, rather to just have a plain color, we can use the asset server to load player sprite. And we do the into here to convert to whatever the materials wants to have. And now we don't need to have the sprite anymore because the sprite will be generated from this. Press save. And then that's it. We have our little ferris over there. OK, so what we want is to display the ferris at the bottom of the screen. So the first things we're going to compute the bottom. So that will be the bottom. And windows.height divided by 2. And then after, in the sprite bundle here, we have another property, which is called transform. And that takes a transform struct. We're going to use the default right now because there's some properties we don't need to define. And then we're just going to use the property translation for now. It's going to be a vector 3, which is a vector of floating number. And I'm going to explain why there's 3 and not 2. So first one is the x. So we're going to have it dead center. And now we're going to use our bottom. It will be at the center of the ferris. So we want it a little bit up. So we're going to add the height of the face, which we know is 75 divided by 2. And we're going to add a little bit of padding here. And we need to make sure that everything is float. And then the third one here is the Z. So if we make a 10, for example, and we have our laser at 0, then the lasers will always be below whatever has a higher Z. And actually, the thing here we need to make sure is that that is a minus bottom. We need to go down, obviously. And now we press Save. And then we get our ferris at the bottom. So it's a little bit big, so we can scale it down. And we're going to use a scale. That is, again, a VEC3. New scale by half. And the last one, we don't need to scale it. And now we press Save. OK, so now it's a little bit high. And the reason why it's a little bit high is because we divided by 2 here, so the height is divided by 2. So we need to divide it by 4, save, and now it's much better. OK, so this is great. We have it working, but we need to do some cleanup. The first thing that we need is to split the system into smaller parts, such as BV can optimize them better. 
as well as making the code more composable. So for example, here the spawn sprite should be its own system. And the way you do that is you just create a function and we're going to call it player spawn. And we're going to copy paste here the code here. And for now, we're going to comment it out. The next thing that we're going to clean up here is all of these materials here that would be reused many times as the player respawn and the enemies and the explosion and so on. We want to create them only once. And the way you do that is with resources. Is we're going to create a struct. And the first resource here we're going to create is going to be a struct, materials. And the first one here is going to be our player materials. And the type of it will be a handle color material. So now that we have done that, in our first setup here, which is going to be our main setup, we are going to create the main resources. And the way you do it is always with comments, and we're going to do insert resource materials, which is our structure. And right now we're going to have only one player materials, and we're going to copy paste this one here, here. And that will create the resource with this first material here and put it into the baby engine. So now what we can do here is we go back to our player function and we're going to add the mute command. So that is always a kind of a starting point. And then we're going to create our materials here, but this time, we don't have to have the asset material factory. It's more going to be our materials, which is already built on. And so that will be a res materials. And the beauty of this is that that will give us this one here. And we don't need mute. So it's very important to not set mute, such as the BV engine can optimize. Press save, and it almost worked. We just have the window here. So we have two options. One is we could pass a window as a non-mutable. That will work fine. Or we're going to use the same kind of way here of creating another resource just to store the height and the width. So since we're going to use a windows width and height in some other systems, we're going to use the same technique here of resources. So we're going to go back here and in our resource here, we're going to use a struct. For now, we're going to put it not public size and that will have the width which is F32, and height, F32. And so here we're going to move this window here on top, and then here we're going to do commands.insert resource, wind size this time, and we're going to do the width is window.width, and height, window.height. Semicolon here, semicolon matters, press save. And now, in our player, spawn, we can add a resource. And you guessed it, we just add a win size, which is a resource, doesn't need to be mutable, win size. And here, I just have a win size height, press save. This needs to be a clone, yeah, because it needs to be reused. And then we press save and it works. And it's again here, the typing of Rust makes your code super tight. Okay, so now we are almost ready. What we need to do is in our main, we are going to we are going to add a startup system, but here we are going to put it in a stage here, and we don't have to go too specific right now. But we want to make sure that that happens after the setup. So that is one way of doing it. So we are going to do game setup actors, and then the way that the startup stage here, you give a system stage single player spawn dot system. So this is a function, yeah? We're not making a player spawn function call here. We're taking the function object, the struct in a way, and calling system on it. Let's save, and now everything should be fine. So let's go and give it a try. Cargo, run. And that's it. So it works the same as before, but now it's much more componentized. Okay, so now let's make our player move. And we're going to use a left, right arrow. And for this, the first things we're going to do is going back up. We're going to create a constant here that would be our time step, 
which is the time pair frame. So we're going to assume the 60 frames per second. And now we're going to start creating our first components. And the first one we're going to create is an empty struct. And that will allow us, when we create our entity, to give a marker to the entity. And we'll see how it's used later. And then what we want here is that a player will have a property and reserve to put the property as part of the player structure we are going to actually have a property as its own structure. So here we're going to say player speed. And that will be a tuple strut of F32, because a single value. So we use tuple strut when there's a single value. Obviously, you can do a normal strut here. And we're going to implement the default for the default speed. And that will be self 500. So now when we add the player to the scene here, which is in our player spawn, we want to make sure that we're going to add this to the bundle, to the entity bundle. So when we call spawn bundle, it creates an entity and assign all of these members, here, these properties, as component of this entity. And so now here, the way we can add custom components, and the way to add it here is we do an insert, and we're going to do a player. So that is our unit struct to define the player, and then insert player speed, and we use the default here. So now, an entity will be created, spawn into the scene, and we'll have the component material, transform, and then the player, which is our structure, and then the player speed, which is our structure as well. And so it's not a big object with all of these properties, but more kind of a composition of all of these components. Okay, so now that we have added those components into our entity, we're ready to do the next system here, player movement system. And for this, we need the keyboard input from Bevy. So that will be a resource input key code. And now here's the other magic trick of Bevy. We can build a query, which is a query type here of Bevy. And inside the generic, you put a tuple, and basically you are giving what you want to query. So every time we do a command spawn or create entity and all the insert, it's like creating a table row in a SQL database, for example. And now we can query this memory database and extract the components that we want by the type, transform, player, and player speed. So here what we want is we want a reference of speed and we don't need to have it mutable because we just want to read the speed. We want a reference of transform. So that will be this property because of this type. So the match happened by type. And then we want this for the player. So we say with player. And that will return a Boolean, usually a true. And that's say to Bevy to query anything that has an insert player struct here. And then the movement here, is we do a if let okay and that will be a query single mute so we want the mutable of the first row that we find into this query and we know we have only one here because we just have one player later when we're going to shoot lasers here we'll do just a for loop and then inside here we're going to deconstruct this tuple so we're going to have the speed the mute transformed and the player, we don't really care. It's actually a Boolean, but here we don't really care. It was just to make sure that Bevy only give us the row for this player. Now we're going to compute the direction if we go left or right. So we're going to do a let dir If keyboard input pressed key code left, then we're going to do minus one to the left. Else if right, we're going to do on the right. And else zero. We can remove this to zero here to be consistent. So that gives us the direction. And now the only thing that we need to do is transform, translation, a property of transform, dot x. And then we are going to add the direction, multiply by the speed, dot zero. It's a tuple struct here. So we just use the first value of the tuple struct. And then we multiply by our time step. Press save, and I'm sorry here, 
make a mistake here, this is a player speed, and this is an enum here, so obviously key code. Press save, and then everything is good. Okay, so now that we have this system, don't forget to add it as a system. And so we're going to go here, and that won't be a startup system now, it would be a normal system. So we do this method, system, press save, and now we do cargo run, click here, and that's it. Pretty cool. Okay, so now let's make it fire here. So that is going to become interesting. So we go at the top here. We're going to create our laser sprite. And we're going to use this asset here. And then in the materials here, I want to have the materials laser. That will have the same type as this. So we'll create that below. And then on the component side, this is where it become quite powerful. We're going to have a struct here, laser. So here we can have multiple laser, obviously. But now the speed, we don't have to make the speed only for players. Speed can be for anybody. And so that is the power of component. I can just rename this guy, speed. And now anybody that have movement can have a component that is speed. Now we go down. We're going to update our materials here. Laser, laser sprite, press save. This one should go fine. And now we're going to have actually a similar component as player spawn, but with the keyboard input as well, because it's when we press space that will fire. So let's create our system here. Fn player fire. We're going to take our mute commands because that is what we need to create a new entity. We are going to have our keyboard here, which will be the same as this guy. Then we'll have our materials, which will have the resource here for the laser. And then we're going to have our query. It's going to be a mute query, query type. And now we want to have the transform because we want the position of the player. And then we have the with player to make sure that we get the player. So here we query the player to know where we want the laser to start from. Okay, so now let's go and focus on our player fire here. So the first things we're going to do here is extract the query values here. So we're going to do if let, okay, and we're going to extract our player transformation. And then the with player is always a Boolean true, so we don't really care, obviously. And that will be our query single mute. And then we're going to say if the keyboard is pressed with the key code space. So we're going to do a let x player transform translation x. We get the y. And then we're going to spawn our laser. The same thing here, sprite bundle. The material will be the materials dot laser. And we don't forget to clone. Our transform, this is where we decide where we want to start from. It's going to be a translation, and that is going to be a vec3 new x. So it's going to start from the center of our player. And then we're going to do y. And here we're putting the zero. And zero here is a z index. So basically we want it below the player. And then after we have our default, we're going to have the default as well for the sprite bundle. And then as we did before, we spawn the bundle, but we can add components again to this entity. So we're going to do an insert. We're going to add our laser, which is our struct unit. And then after we're going to add our speed. And for now the same speed as the player. So we're going to do a speed default. Then we go on top here. And now we're going to add another system here which is going to be the add system, player, fire, system. Now let's give it a shot. Cargo, run. And that's pretty cool. So obviously the laser is not moving because we're just pawning the laser 
and we're not moving it. So let's add that. Stop, clear. Okay, so to add it, we are going to add a function here, another system, which is going to be add system laser movement system. And we're going to create a function right now. So we go down. And we're going to create our laser movement function. And the first one here is we're going to have the comments again. And the reason why is because we want to remove the laser once it goes above the window. Because otherwise, that would be a memory leak. So we need the wind size to know when to remove it. So that is a resource that we're keeping track of. And then we can do the mute query. And in the query, we need the entity. And we're going to see why later. The speed of the laser, the transform of the laser. And to make sure that this record here is for the laser only, again, we put our with laser, our struct unit. So we're going to iterate through the laser entity, the speed, the mutable laser transformation. And then the with laser is again just a Boolean. We don't really need it. And then we're going to do in query iter. And we obviously want the mutable because we have the mutable of laser here. So first we're going to take the translation and we want the reference of mutable translation. And then we're just going to move the translation Y. We're going to add the speed that zero multiply by the time step. And then we don't forget here to say that if translation dot Y, which is at the middle of the laser is greater than the wind size height, then we want to remove this entity here from baby. And the way you do that is you do commands entity, and that is where you put the laser entity, and then you do a despawn. Press save, spinning over there, press save, and everything looks okay. So again here, the entity, we didn't create this entity object, is in baby when you do a command and you spawn a bundle or create an entity, you give all of these components, and that will create the entity for this component set. And so here, what we're asking when we are query is we ask the entity, which is a type of baby here, which is just a number. And you can use this ID number for this entity, which is all of these components. And then here we are asking it to say, give us this entity and despawn it, which basically means remove it. So now let's give it a try, cargo run. And that's pretty cool. Obviously, it's not exactly what we want because that would be a super easy game, but it's much better than what we had. And again, here we see that the speed is actually pretty fast, even if we keep pressing, because everything gets removed. If we were to comment this out and run again, we quickly realize that as we create more of these items, that they don't get released, eventually the things become very, very, very slow. And that is because all of these lasers that we created are still managed all the time and they are growing infinitely. So obviously here we want to turn this one on. Okay, so now what we want obviously is not to fire that fast, because otherwise there's no challenge at all. So. What we want is every time we press the space bar, you wait until the space bar is up to be able to fire again. Such as if we keep pressing, it doesn't fire. So for that, we go back up there. And we're going to create a new component, but this time only for player. Player ready fire. And that will take a bull. We take this, and when we are going to spawn our player, we are going to insert this structure with true, obviously. And then when we fire, we are going to query this structure here, and we want mutable because we are going to obviously change it. And now we Add it here to our query, ready, fire. And we say, if 
really fire and the key is pressed, then we're allowed to fire. And then we obviously want to set it to false. And then the way that we say when the key is up is with F, KB, just released, key code, space. And here we're going to set this value here back to true. Press save. We forgot here to put it mute. Press save. Everything is good. And now we're going to do a cargo run. Now I press left, right. And I press space bar. Keep pressing, nothing happened. Press multiple time. And it works fine. Okay, so there's one little detail here. There's a laser here below the player here. We start below the player, which doesn't look very good. So the way here we can do that is very simple. Here we are going to add a little bit of padding. Probably 15 would be enough. Press save. And here we are going to do another cargo here on this one. And now it looks much better. It looks like it comes from somewhere in the middle. Okay, so that will conclude today's episode. In the next one, we are going to make the two laser here coming from each little hand, and we're going to make the first enemy and the explosion. Until then, happy coding.